Hello to everyone watching this footage. It's Leviathan here again, and to start things off, I'm going to introduce myself to newcomers. I'm born high-functioning autistic, I'm obsessed with fiction, and I'm planning to make my own creative universe in hopes of being as blessed as the late Stanley was. For this particular storyline involves a character that might seem a bit hard to pronounce in terms of the design of the name, which it shouldn't be a concern long term and such. This character is known as the Preantrum Nonsicalis. Or you could just simply call her Peggy if it's too hard of a name for you. It's all on you. It's your choice. And if you guys bear with me as I read this introductory storyline, you would have some understanding. If that's the right way to put it. You know? And here it is. Priantrum Nonsicolus, number one, the beginning, created and copyrighted by Levi Corsi Ames, July 16th, 2015. To begin the story, we travel far into the deep past, far enough to the final hours of a universe before this one. Every organism at the time had evolved into its maximum capacity, where none of the universe is ever part of the past. In an intergalactic hospital, we see a fair obstetrician helping with a pregnancy delivery. This story is about her. At this point, she is only known as Peggy. She has bright blue eyes, bright blonde hair and a short bob, and is dressed in nurse clothes. After the procedure of delivering the fraternal twins, she says, Congratulations! You are the new parents of, a." Uh, but she never finished her sentence, because in her horror, she found that the universe is imploding into itself. After a mere 15 seconds, the universe disappeared, with only Peggy and the two newborn babies remaining. After floating in the vast nothingness for what felt like hours, Peggy noticed a white cosmic light appearing out of the darkness. From that light, a vast entity appeared. She has one blue right eye, one green left eye, luscious whitish blonde hair and shoulder length, and was dressed in a fully formed cosmic dress with a matching short jacket over it. She appeared so unnaturally beautiful that Peggy didn't know what to say. Hello there, Peggy. I am Alexa Mighty, or simply, Goddess. What just happened? Peggy finally asked as she tried to keep the babies from crying. Due to all that you've known was merely a test run for my power, that entire universe had consumed itself. You and those babies are very lucky to survive. I hope you're not offended. Wait. If you're goddess, then are you able to bring them all back? And she answered, Yes, I can, but in a more stable and substantial form. Now I'm going to use my universal power to bring all matter back, though it has to start over. You should cover your eyes and ears. And Peggy did just that. Goddess then rubbed her hands together until they glowed with an unknown energy. After that, she clapped them together, making a loud BOOM, and making everything too bright to see. When the light faded, entire galaxies started forming out of the emptiness of the void. What you've experienced is the best way to bring all matter back. It will forever be known as the Big Bang. Goddess explained to an astonished Peggy. Goddess then got Peggy and the babies in the palm of her right hand and used her powers to take the infants away from her. Don't worry, Peggy. Through my control of time, space, and matter, I will put these twins in the perfect place for them. As they grow up, they will mate and become the first ancestors of a species forever known as humanity. And here on out, they will simply be named Adam and Eve Cook. And Goddess transported them 
within a cosmic beam far beyond sight. As for you, Peggy, I am pleased that you have the integrity to save them. For a reward, you will be the second member of a universal group that will be known as the Alpha Gods. You will become the eternal goddess of conception, the Priantrum Nonsicolus. What does that even mean? Peggy asked Goddess in concern. It is a universal term that translates to, From this core lies creation. From her left hand, she encased Peggy with cosmic energy until she transformed into an equally vast entity. She then appeared to wear a silver latex suit coated with glorious sparkles. Goddess then continued, The souls of those to come will be manifested from your pre-birth chamber. And when the time surely arrives, they will phase out of that chamber and into their designated bodies. Okay, Peggy finally said optimistically. Where shall we go now? You shall come with me back to your new domain. It's directly outside of the cosmos, where it's unable to be found by most mortals. It's called as Galimpius. They then traveled there through their cosmic powers, making a new day dawn for the Leviathan universe. The end. Well, I hope you guys enjoy the storyline and such. Um, I also hope that I'm doing things right for this podcast. I know I've been trying all that I can to stay polite and fair when it comes to likes and subscriptions and views and such. But uh, I just feel a bit desperate sometimes in terms of having efficient progression for the amount of people that would be introduced to my work. I honestly don't want to seem overly desperate, but at the same time, I'd like to feel the glory. No matter, like, how long it would have to take and such, I just hope it's satisfactory and I hope my creations are immortalized, you know? I just hope I'm doing this correctly and such. You know how it is. And if you want, you could like, subscribe, and comment down below. It's your choice, nonetheless. It's all on you. And until next time, I'm Leviathan. Hopefully you guys are having a fine time with whatever you feel like doing. And until next time, in transmission.